It's here, it's finally here, it's in my hands quite literally, and I've been testing it for the last two days. Now I only got this on the Tuesday before the launch, so again that's only about two days, so I'm not going to be doing any overclocking specifically in this video. I'm also not going to show overclock results in this video. That will be in a separate video on Sunday where I'm going to show you how to overclock on the normal basis, as well as the Ryzen Master Utility and the results I got from overclocking this with the GTX 980 to compare to the overclock results from the 7700K. I've also got a whole load of results for this one already, including normal, just benchmarking it, you know, throwing it in a motherboard with the same graphics card as all the other cards, uh, all the other chips that I've tested with, as well as with SMT, or simultaneous multi-threading turned off, as well as also with a GTX 1070 to directly compare fresh results with a 7700K as well. So I've got a lot to talk about in this video, so uh, without you know further ado, let's just get into it. Now I want to make it clear that this is a brand new platform. We've got a full set of new motherboards. AMD is claiming over 80, which is quite cool. I'm not going to be reviewing all of those motherboards directly. I'm going to be reviewing this one, uh, the Asus Hero one above me, and a few other ones as they kind of come in, but I'm not going to be doing 80 reviews for those boards. But either way, the uh, point is that there's a lot of new features on here. On the X370 chipset, which is what this uh, Gigabyte AX370 uh, Gaming 5 board is, it uh, has a lot of new features. Uh, sort of catch up a little bit. Obviously, it's been a long time since we've had had a proper motherboard and chipset refresh from AMD. So we've got stuff like DDR4 support, PCIe Gen 3.0. We also have proper M.2 support as well, USB 3.1 and Type-C. So all that sort of stuff is now available standard on the platform. You also have multiple different types of chipsets similar to uh, Intel's current lineup. Although at this point, there are actually a, a few differences. So you've got the B350, which is the kind of mid-tier range where you still have the unlocked potential to overclock your CPU but at the same time you have uh, limited PCIe connectivity through that platform. They're likely going to be M80X type boards. Uh, and then you do have the uh, A320, which is the locked multiplier. So even though the chips themselves have unlocked multipliers, the A320 motherboards will not allow you to overclock. That's how they determine which one is you know, enthusiast grade or not. Uh, the other thing to mention is you do have X300, which is an ITX chipset, which is actually really interesting. And we'll go into more detail on an X300. 300 motherboard review when I get one, uh, but that's also unlocked. And then you have, I think it's the A300, that's also ITX, but that one's locked. I think we should probably talk about specs here. So the first thing is that this is an eight core, 16 thread CPU using simultaneous multi-threading or SMT for short, which can be disabled in the BIOS if you like. You also have a 14 nanometer process, it's a 3.6 gigahertz clock speed with a four gigahertz boost and XFR or extended frequency range. So basically that means that the chip will auto overclock itself on a single core just a little bit higher than the boost clock. So for me that was 4.1 gigahertz. This uh, definitely depends on which chip you have. Silicon lottery is definitely a thing with this and it depends on cooling you have too so bear that one in mind. Other thing to mention is that this is a 95 watt TDP chip which compared to Intel's 6900K at 140 watts is actually already pretty impressive. It has 4 megabytes of L2 cache, 16 megabytes of L3 and 24 PCIe lanes. This is split for either 60 for the graphics card if you have one card or 8 and 8 if you have two cards in SLR crossfire. You also have an X4 connection ready for NVMe or U.2 or M.2 SSDs as well as another X4 connection directly to the chipset. AMD is pricing this at a really interesting point. This is $499 for this 8 core 16 thread CPU which is directly competing with Intel's $1000 6900K. I'm going to be showing you the benchmark results in just a second because let's face it that's probably why you're here. Uh, but the, the main thing is that this is a really impressive chip at a really impressive price point and I'm, I'm very excited so let's take a look at the benchmark results. Starting off with Cinebench, as you can see, compared to its two main rivals, the 77 and 6900K, it does a really good job at being just a tiny, tiny bit slower than the 6900K in multi-threaded, and being uh, decently faster in single, and a little bit slower in single-threaded than the 7700K. In Asus Realbench, it just walks away with it here. I think it was mostly the encoding numbers that really kind of blew me away with this. Uh, the image editing was a little bit lower than the 7700K. I had an OpenCL error 
power, which I will show you in the main results in a second, uh, and overall just really impressive. In 3D Mark, the physics score was just a tiny bit less than the 6900K, but impressively higher than the 7700K, even with a 4.9 GHz overclock on that one. Uh, and when you look at GTA 5, uh, I think this is mostly an optimization problem rather than anything else, uh, and I will be re-reviewing this chip in a few months' time to see if this has changed at all, but it is still fairly impressive, even if it is in GTA 5 a bit of a bottleneck. In Dirt Rally, however, as you can see, there really isn't a massive difference between the 1800X, the 7700K, and the 6900K either. Now, since I spent a full day benchmarking all of this and recording all of my numbers, I don't think I can just leave it here. Here is my full Ryzen mega sheet, including results from Doom, all of the min, max, and average, as well as 1440p and 4K results as well, as well as 980 with SMT disabled and 1070 results, as well as a reference 7700K with a GTX 1070. Also, the temperatures, which was a, a kind of max of about 62 degrees with a Noctua U12S, which is actually really impressive. And I also want to thank Josh from Crit TV, the, you know, uh, sort of Logan Tech Syndicate side of things, um, who sent over some Arma 3 results uh, with a 1070 and a Ryzen 7 1800X at stock clocks. So thank you to those guys. I'll leave a link to their review in the description down below if you want to check that one out. But for me, the most interesting thing, besides the fact that I couldn't get Ashes of the Singularity to work in a reliable manner, and I'm not going to be giving you inaccurate results here, so I didn't do uh, any final testing on that, so it's still on there but it's not uh, any accurate number, so I don't want uh, to sort of quote that sort of stuff. But either way, the, the most interesting thing for me was with SMT disabled, uh, you saw a massive difference in multi-threaded, you know, synthetic workloads. But when it comes to the gaming workloads, there really isn't a massive difference here. And that was something that really surprised me. When I was running, comparing it to the 7700K with the 1070, of course it's going to be lower because the single-threaded performance just isn't as high, and that's kind of what game really are kind of using right now. Obviously with a DirectX 12 game I would have liked to have shown that and I will be rebenching this in the next couple months and hopefully showing you some more games as well. So hopefully in that sort of future view I can give you a better taste of what this multi-core has to offer. But here is the results that I have now and as I said I'm going to link those in the uh, in the web article as well. Now that you've seen the benchmark results let's talk a little bit about the value of this chip. Now sure it's not as fast just for games as the 7700K, neither is the 6900K that is almost three times, in fact actually more than three times the cost of the 7700K. So if you're just looking for a pure gaming chip and doing nothing else, then the 7700K is still a decent purchase, although I do recommend waiting to find out the uh, performance of the 1700, uh, which is the uh, chip sort of two steps down from this one. I'm going to be reviewing that one fairly shortly when I do get my hands on it, so I'm going to do that one as quick as I can and let you know, but either way, uh, the 7700 Okay, if you're just purely gaming and doing absolutely nothing else, it's still a decent shout. But if you're doing anything, if you're streaming and gaming, if you're doing video editing, if you're doing anything that is even remotely CPU intensive, then this at only what one or two hundred dollars more than the 7700K and about five hundred dollars less than the 6900K is a just utterly fantastic shout. Now, I will have to wait to see what Intel does with pricing. Uh, this is still pre-launch, so I can't exactly tell you what they're going to do. But even if it does come down to the same price, this is still a fantastic value for money, and I still really highly recommend it. The other thing to mention is that the Silicon Lottery is definitely back with these chips. Since all of them are unlocked, it means that you're literally giving away free performance if you don't overclock them, even just by a few hundred megahertz. And for me, the most interesting thing is that uh, it's just, as I said, Silicon Lottery is back. It depends depends very much and it's a very varied situation depending on what chip you have and I don't mean you know if you have the 1800X versus the 1700X or something I mean specifically what bit of silicon you have depends on how far you go with your overclock so uh, that is a very interesting thing and I'm going to cover all of that in the overclocking video on Sunday so do stick around do subscribe for that video this is going to be really awesome to see the performance of this I think for me this is as I said, just a really impressive
championship chip and I think it's time to move on to the scoring. So I think I'm going to have to give this a 5 for everything. Now I was debating giving it a kind of 4.5 for performance because compared to the 77 and the 6900Ks respectively, the single and multi-threaded performance can be a little bit lower depending on where you're looking. But especially when you compare this price-wise, this is utterly fantastic. And as I said, if you are doing just anything other than just gaming, this is a fantastic CPU and I really do recommend it. Of course, there are the 1700X and the 1700 chips available as well. So do stick around for those reviews. I believe I'm getting my 1700X uh, this week as well. So hopefully I'll have that out by next, probably next Wednesday if I can. But uh, yeah, either way, I'm gonna give this a top tier award. It's utterly fantastic and uh, I really do massively recommend it. So with all that said and done, I wanna make it clear that this is not a massively in-depth and detailed review. I believe Ian Cutchers from Anantech is uh, doing a very, very detailed write-up for you. So if you wanna take a look at that, especially all of the comparisons that he is doing and still running tests for, then feel free to take a look at that one before you buy this and don't just take my word for it. If you do want to take my word for it though, I'll leave some links in the description down below for you to check these chips out. And of course, if you're buying anything else, it could be it would be awesome if you could use Overclockers UK or affiliate links in the description down below. They help me out, they support the channel, they keep these videos possible with only two days lead time to do all of the testing, filming, and everything. Uh, and of course, I'm going to be doing plenty more videos, including full motherboard reviews and everything uh, over the coming days, weeks, and potentially even months. So uh, yeah, do stick around for that. Feel free to subscribe if you enjoyed the video. If this is the first Tech Team GB video you've watched, let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below, or if you're a regular viewer, feel free to let me know too. Of course, feel free to follow me on Facebook and Twitter as well. I'm going to leave some other videos up here for you, as well as the subscribe button over on this side. And of course, uh, as I said, more videos coming out very soon, so uh, do stick around for those. But uh, yeah, either way, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you all in the next video.